bringing you this webinar today, Audubon's Bird-Based Tourism Initiative Takes Flight, to discuss the launch of Flyway Expeditions, a series of birding tours to help conserve important bird areas and strengthen local communities. I'd like to start by introducing our moderator today, Debbie Sturdivant Jordan. Debbie is Holbrook Travel's Birding Tourism Specialist, and she has been a travel specialist with Holbrook since 2001. She has a passion for travel, nature, and boating. She has traveled to more than 35 countries and has spent time in Costa Rica, Panama, and the Galapagos Islands. She is a leader in birding and natural history tour planning and development. Welcome, Debbie. Well, thanks, Lindsay. Wow, what a nice intro. Um, I am so excited to be here and talking with you guys about our um, new Flyways expeditions with National Audubon. And we're just very happy to be collaborating and finally um, launching this initiative that we've been working on for, for a couple of years. And I know Audubon has work, been working very hard uh, to in, in the country. So what I'm going to do here is just go over the agenda and um, talk. And each person then will introduce themselves and give a little bit of information uh, just so you can hear their voices. And one thing I wanted to mention also that uh, Matt Jeffrey uh, is with Maki on her computer. So when he's speaking, you may see that uh, that it says Maki on there as well. But anyway, um, go ahead and get started uh, with the introductions. And I'm going to turn it over to Matt Jeffrey of uh, National Audubon. He's uh, up there in Washington, DC. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining and, and thank you Holbrook for hosting this uh, webinar which uh, is a very, you know, is an opening to a very exciting program that, that Audubon has been working on for the, the past three years that's, that's getting some great results which we'll get to in a little while. Um, as, as it's been introduced, my name is Matt Jeffrey. I am the Deputy Director for the International Alliances Program at Audubon. Um, I've been here for about 10 years. Uh, working on connecting uh, Audubon's uh, great work in the United States at the state, state offices and chapters with um, efforts by the BirdLife International Partnership in Latin America and the Caribbean um, and driving forward bird conservation in those areas to support the wintering habitats for the birds that you care about in your backyards. Um, so I'm very excited today to be to be a presenter on this webinar, and I um, look forward to sharing some of um, our projects, uh, this project, with you um, uh, in a little while. Thank you, Matt. Thank you so much. My name is Andrea Holbrook. I'm the president of Holbrook Travel. Um, we, for those of you who have not traveled with us, uh, we uh, specialize in educational and nature, uh, birding, uh, garden, photography, um, and, and many other wonderful niches in the educational and nature travel arena. Uh, we also own and operate Salvo Verde Lodge and private reserve in the lowland tropical rainforests of Costa Rica. And um, it's a family uh, organization started in 1974. Um, and um, it's my pleasure to be here with you today. And thank you so much for, for joining us. We hope to uh, share what, what we want to share today and um, have lots of questions. And uh, hello all. I don't know if you can hear me. My name is Rowan McNabb. I would really like to thank uh, the National Audubon Society and Holbrook Travel for inviting us to participate in, in this. Uh, I am the Guatemala Program Director here at the Wildlife Conservation Society based in Flores Peten, Guatemala. and look forward to having people visit the area. Thank you. And hello everyone, my name is Maki Tozawa and I'm the Project Specialist with National Audubon helping to manage our bird-based tourism initiatives throughout the Americas. And we're excited to, to have you guys on this call and, and share some of the, the work we've been, we've been doing and how you can start to be a part of it. Wonderful. Thank you. And I, I believe that's um, over to Matt, correct? Yeah, I believe so. Hopefully everybody can see a lovely, beautiful bird on the screen. Um, this is the Royal Flycatcher taken in, uh, in Belize at one of the project sites. Um, but what we want to do today is just introduce you to a project we've been working on um, to build local capacity and uh, better take care of the habitats that birds need um, when they travel south. So, Mark, 
Um, so for those of you that know Audubon, and I'm, I'm guessing there's quite a few, hope, hoping there's a lot of chapter members on the call today, um, our strategy is, uh, our new strategy at National Audubon is to really follow the birds and, and take care of them where they need us in, uh, outside of the United States, where more than 50% of our breeding birds um, actually winter and spend probably more of their time than on the breeding grounds. And essentially what we're trying to do is close the loop. We're trying to think about the full life cycle efforts needed to conserve those birds, not just focused on productivity in the U.S., but also thinking about making sure they survive when they leave the U.S. Uh, this is an exciting, exciting project that we, we've been working on that is regional in scope. It's actually taking in four different countries, um, which is, I apologize, five different countries, um, which is really uh, trying to elevate birds as a focus uh, for some of those countries. It's, it's connecting the conservation work with economic development. Um, it's engaging both uh, children and adults in, uh, in and around uh, protected areas that we care about to uh, get them engaged in the conservation effort. Um, and it has, is actually helping both support habitat conservation, reducing the impacts on some of those habitats, um, but also creating, helping to create some new protected areas in the process. So it's been a very exciting ride for us, and it directly aligns with our conservation work um, as we go forward. Our partners in this initiative, um, you know, National Audubon Society is not on the ground in all of these countries. We work with and through other organizations um, to achieve some of the work that we do. Um, and the four, five countries are the Bahamas, Belize, Guatemala, Colombia, and Paraguay. Um, and working, and we're working with the local partners there. So this isn't all about Audubon. This is about empowering and strengthening those local organizations um, and helping them achieve conservation on the ground um, so that when we leave, there are sustainability uh, built into the process. Um, the goals for this initiative, the bird-based tourism initiative, are really fairly simple. Um, we want to increase the number of local people benefiting from bird-based tourism. So this is looking at rural communities around protected areas and how they can be, uh, how we can help them get into um, the tourism business, whether they're guides specifically or whether they're hosting uh, individuals or cooking for individuals or hotels or lodges or even drivers for those tours so that they, they have the opportunity to make money from people traveling to these countries to watch birds. And most importantly, they're around protected areas, so their income increases, their dependence on poaching and uh, taking wood from the, from the habitats um, is diminished, and uh, we can actually save, save habitats that way. Um, we want to increase the revenue for protected areas so that they can actually manage them a little bit better. So by increasing just a little bit without destroying the habitats, uh, the visitation and gate takings, we can actually pump more money back into managing the sites, which again helps us ensure that those habitats are there for future generations. And we want to improve protections and ecosystem health. So uh, a great example of this in the Bahamas, this project, um, which we, <laughs> the project in the Bahamas actually helped us secure the Jolta Keys National Park which is home to about 10% of the Atlantic coast population of piping plovers, is now 92,000 acre protected area. So, so it really is helping us achieve some very significant conservation wins um, as well. The project itself has a fairly simple structure. Um, there are four components, um, and it's a very um, intense and sort of um, holistic approach to this, this effort. Um, it's improved structure and capacity of bird-based tourism. So that means training the guides uh, to a world-class standard. Um, it, it means working with uh, businesses, at restaurants and hotels and taxi drivers to ensure that they have, they understand what bird people, people watching birds really need and to ensure that they can operate at uh, a standard that we're happy with. Um, we're also looking at uh, marketing. So Part of this call today is sort of marketing these products. So it's great that we build capacity. It's great that we have people on our side. It's great that um, you know that, that people are excited about birds in these countries now uh, for the first time in some cases. 
Um, but it's not going to work unless we have clients to go to these uh, areas and actually uh, pay some of these guides and some of these businesses um, to, um, to take them and show them the wonderful birds that are there. Uh, we're also doing community outreach. There's an educational component, both uh, student, children, and adult, uh, which has been very, very successful and helps sort of think about sort of the longer term sustainability of this program. And then we're sharing the knowledge um, that we're gaining, sort of the lessons learned, communication strategies, et cetera, et cetera, and replicating the product in other areas in the future. Um, so just to uh, just to show that the, the some of the highlights of the accomplishments to date, uh, we really have, um, I think, done a wonderful job, um, and the partners that we work with, like Rowan, have done a wonderful job of of really engaging the communities around these protected areas and getting them engaged in this process. Uh, we've created world-class um, curriculum um, that are being implemented across all five countries now. Uh, two levels, a basic level to sort of engage um, as many community members as possible and sort of bring them to a basic standard so that they can uh, actively guide people. Um, and know their birds, but then also an advanced level which allows um, some of those guides, not as many, but some of those guides um, to really take you and show you the world-class experience. Um, to date, there are 276 guides that have been trained at the basic level across these five countries, 64 to the advanced level. Um, and this, the advanced level is almost like a university degree. Um, it really is a very um, intense uh, approach. Uh, we've engaged over 7,000 community members around protected areas to engage, to talk about conservation and the importance of these sites for birds. Uh, of those, over almost 1,500 are adults and, and, uh, five and a half thousand are children. Um, We've got uh, eBirds, so so the communities that are the, the guides that are taking these courses are actually taking their knowledge and helping us collect citizen science data through eBird. Um, and just as an example, I think Belize was this year uh, the eBird Central America champ champions, and that was predominantly because of this program. Uh, they submitted um, hundreds and hundreds of, of checklists, which is really helping us understand. Uh, and gather data for, for birds and climate change and other, other aspects. Um, we've also created apps and uh, we've, we've started to take the uh, several trips to Colombia. Um, so it's really, you know, I think, I think we're, at a, we're at a point now where, where we're moving on and we're really trying to, you know, take, get more people to go and visit these sites to help us with our conservation action and bring economics to some of these rural communities so that they do, in fact, see the value of birds and the habitats that's around them. Um, and, and as I say, it's, it's, you know, as, as the quote here says, it's, it's only going to, the training is only going to work if we can stimulate the markets to support us um, and support these communities in the long term. These are great birding destinations, all of them. Uh, tremendous birds, tremendous culture, a tremendous opportunity. And, and so it's really just driving uh, existing markets and new markets to see some of these wonderful sites um, and experience, we're alongside our trained guides, uh, some of these wonderful experiences. Um, we've been really, you know, the marketing side of things is really, we got newspapers, we've had PBS NewsHour, we're working with Holbrook here today on the webinars. Um, we've been visiting various uh, events to try and promote this project. Um, and we're just um, finalizing some of the marketing materials, including trail maps and videos, to help promote some of these areas and give you more information when you, when you do actually visit these sites. But we're really excited. The, the, this is a really a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Uh, this is what we think is a real behind-the-scenes new style of birdwatching. It really is directly impacting local communities. It is hiring those guides that have been trained. It is going to certain areas and experiencing sort of local conservation issues and having guides that understand the local conservation issues and are involved in the local conservation issues so that you get a more holistic sort of um, opportunity to understand not just go and see great birds, but understand what's going on to try and save those birds in the places um, that you're visiting. Um, that's about all I've got for now. I'm going to hand it off now to the professionals who can tell you about what we've got cooking up with uh, between us.
Rowan, I think uh, I think do you want to say a few words? Have we lost Andrea? Hello, Andrea. Oh, so sorry. I was muted. Um, so can you all hear me? Yes, yes. thank you. Wonderful. And um, Rowan, are you with us? Okay. Um, I, yeah, I'm um, here. Hello. I'm sorry. No um, problem. I'm here, and I'm, I'm here, and we're ready to answer any questions that might be um, provided regarding the tours in Guatemala. Um, the different opportunities for visiting uh, the northern part of the country and also the highlands. Um, we've been working here in the largest protected area in the country of Guatemala. It covers about a fifth of the country and it's one of the most important bird areas in the country. And as Matthew mentioned, just a fantastic opportunity to see birds, um, see a lot of different habitats, uh, maybe 400 species of birds with a lot of nature and cultural sightseeing mixed in. Um, we've identified four different sites working with local communities including Yaksha National Park, ancient Maya city with tall jungles and a lake, Tikal, a UNESCO World Heritage Site with its spectacular ancient Maya city, tall jungle and scrubby thorn forest. Washaktun village is 23 kilometers north of Tikal with an ancient Maya city as well, a tall jungle and also agricultural areas and fallows and an opportunity to learn about community-based forest management. And then Paso Caballos, a Kekchi Maya village and the Las Guacamayas biological station and the ancient Maya site of El Peru on the beautiful San Pedro River with wetlands and tall jungle and swamps full of crocodiles and agami herons and scarlet macaws. And as Matt mentioned, the tours are set up to, to be done with an advanced bird guide here, certified by the National Audubon Society, but also joining in with the basic or community guides who've been trained locally. And so we're really excited. How can you help conserve birds? By participating in a tour, as Matt mentioned, helping to get some, some flow of income into the local inhabitants so that they value birds, but also especially we're really excited about experienced birders coming down to help us evaluate the guides and provide feedback to both the local guides and to National Audubon and to WCS so that we can continue to improve this program. Uh, thank you very much and I'll be on standby for any questions. Thank you so much Rowan, uh, really appreciate that. Um, so. Um, this is Andrea Holbrook and I'm going to be telling you a little bit about um, our uh, programs and uh, collaboration with uh, National Audubon. Um, let me just um, go into a brief introduction. Um, many of you probably have are familiar with Holbrook, if, if not um, Salvo Verde Lodge. Um, we have been working in nature-based tourism, educational tourism since our beginnings in 1974. So my mom, um, Giovanna Holbrook and, and dad Juan Holbrook have been um, really um, gotten a very early start working with um, wonderful birders such as Steve Kress, um, Dr. William Hardy, uh, and, and many, many other uh, talented ornithologists and birders bringing, um, bringing you know, bird enthusiasts and, and ornithologists all over the world, um, principally in Latin America, East Africa. So um, we were very excited um, to be invited in on the ground floor of the International Alliances program and we felt that it dovetailed really nicely and was an opportunity to um, take our existing work in, in, in these countries um, and um, deepen it and make it much richer with the quality of um, resources, training, and, um, and, and frankly, you know, just um, expertise and that IAP is providing through this initiative. Um, we've definitely seen how this works um, firsthand. I lived in Sarapiqui, Costa Rica at Salvo Verde Lodge uh, from 93 to about 90, 94, 95, and um, I can tell you that 
the uh, training and the, the sort of culture of birding tourism has really had a huge impact in Sarapiki for, for those that know it. It's also the home of La Selva Biological Station between Selva Verde, La Selva, and of course other lodges that have come up um, in, in since the time we were started in the mid-80s. Nature tourism is, is and particularly birding, uh, is a very, very strong uh, component of the tourism there. And you see uh, young, young people, particularly, um, you know, young uh, naturalists that are really coming to be at this point in time. Many school children, you know, if you ask them what they'd like to, to grow up to be, you know, they will tell you uh, naturalist guides and birders, and it's sort of the cool thing to be. So I think uh, one of the things I've really seen is just how much this impacts, uh, this sort of birding uh, is a great way to, to raise awareness uh, in a community, and it's a great kind of um, structure to, um, to use to actually build this awareness. So um, flyway expeditions um, are, you know, a, an opportunity to to really um, have birding tours with a with a high degree of sustainability because of of just this thought that has has been in this program. Um, I at this point in time we are working in Guatemala, Belize, and and Colombia, and we hope to roll out um, in the future Bahamas and Paraguay. Um, so wh what are uh, flyway expeditions or how are they different? Um, and uh, you've gotten a good introduction from Matt and, and from Rowan, basically focused around important bird areas. Um, so these were, um, the programs were put together um, doing a sort of cross-section of these important bird areas, uh, super, superb birding opportunities in areas uh, where there's a risk of development. Um, and of course, um, activities that, that allow this, this community engagement. Um, secondly, the extensive guide training. Um, and um, I was privileged to participate uh, actually just this past week in the Bahamas in the graduation ceremony of um, six or, or nine uh, advanced birding guides and it was really exciting uh, to see the pride and um, the the real hope and, ex and um, expectation that these guides who have really, as, as Matt was saying, gone through a tremendous training um, and it was wonderful to see the Bahama Tourism Authorities and other dignitaries there um, obviously paying attention to this important um, segment. Um, so uh, this kind of training is so important uh, for you know, for the traveler, and this is something that um, is a must. Um, we definitely see uh, at Holbrook, you know, having been in the nature and educational um, travel business for so long, we know how important it is to have this um, this kind of community for for training and professional development. Um, so it's an opportunity uh, for local guides uh, to really have a forum and for all kinds of things to be shared that, that make it so that when you get into the field with your Audubon chapters, if you're leaders or if you're a participant, uh, you have a very uh, wonderful experience because these are people that have, have really been working hard on honing um, all of the practices that make a great experience. And it does uh, create a, a family and an extended family and community. Um, you're also supporting local businesses. Um, this is uh, very, very important, as, as Matt referenced, uh, whether it's restaurants, activity providers, local reserves, uh, transport providers. These these are all the um, socioeconomic um, benefits that you know have to thrive uh, for for birding tourism to um, to really have a base. And um, I was very uh, thrilled to meet these uh, Bahamian newly fledged certified guides and to hear about uh, the kinds of 
uh, initiatives um, that they are undertaking in order to build their skills and um, and to be business people, whether you know that's just from a freelance guiding perspective or a local restaurant that their you know their aunt you know has in in a local reserve or even uh, local cabins uh, that uh, will hopefully have um, you know bird-based uh, travelers and nature travelers um, occupying them. So the other aspect um, is, of course, community engagement. Um, and I know that um, birding is a great, great tool for um, you know, such a visible and beautiful example uh, to get students involved, uh, to get um, you know, adults um, and even women's groups or all kinds of groups can, can get on board. So, um, and having an opportunity to have birds be the the sort of um, conversation piece or the the um, cultural exchange link is is just wonderful. So that's obviously something that we try to um, do in our um, flyway expeditions programs um, and and generally um, as well. So that's we understand um, an important part of the birding experience. Um, and uh, finally, uh, really uh, target a conservation and protecting habitat in particular species. So uh, that might be the Bahama Oriole in, um, you know, in Andros, the resplendent Quetzal in, in uh, Belize, and, um, and the scarlet macaw Belize in Guatemala. So um, these are tremendous um, opportunities to really look at building conservation around particular target species. Um, I'm going to briefly mention uh, the programs that we have put together, um, and Debbie will uh, mention to you uh, very briefly um, any, you know, she can certainly respond to questions about how you can work uh, with, with Holbrook to build a program for your Audubon chapter. Um, and um, so we have uh, two programs in Guatemala. One is a shorter program, um, and this is, um, as Rowan referenced, very uh, focused in on the Maya Biosphere Reserve um, and working with the Wildlife Conservation Society uh, in Yaksha and Washaktun. Um, this is a nine-day program. We also have an 11-day program uh, with another uh, conservation partner, the Asociación Vivamos Mejor, um, working in uh, the highlands in the Lake Atitlan, program, uh, Lake Atitlan region. Uh, we have an eight-day Belize uh, program uh, with the conservation partner um, Belize Audubon Society, um, and um, where that is focused in on a crooked tree um, and um, also in the Mountain Pine Ridge area. So. Um, the last one uh, is in the northern um, area of Colombia. It's a 12-day program, also um, in a very incredible holy grail for birders and a very exciting time to be um, offering Colombia since um, the newly signed uh, peace agreement uh, in that region. Um, so uh, I will just mention that we're very happy to work with you uh, building a, for those of you that are leaders, chapter leaders, or would like to uh, form a group and, and bring people over, um, this is a, an, a phenomenal way to build engagement, um, to have uh, fundraising success. Um, and um, for I know for many people, the idea of putting together a travel program is very um, onerous, you know, the time involved, et cetera, et cetera, and Holbrook is, is really there to help you make this a seamless experience. So essentially, you know, we really just need um, a coordinator, if you will, uh, from a particular group, and we work with, with that person to pick dates, uh, start you know, start planning um, and start promoting, and um, we can handle both the land and air, um, and essentially help you with the promotion by creating a web web page uh, for for that particular departure. 
Um, we also have some upcoming um, what I would call inaugural trips. These are actually opportunities to join the experts um, such as Matt uh, and his colleagues John Myers and John Beavers in the field in some um, dated departures. This is this was an opportunity to sort of kick kick this off um, and, and um, so um, I think that uh, we have um, you know, those, those set up for you um, in October um, and November of, of this year as well as um, April of 2018. So thank you very much and we're really looking forward to answering questions at this point. Uh, well, thank you, Andrea, and yep. um, thank you to all of our presenters. Um, I believe we will uh, go ahead and uh, we have received some questions. Uh, again, if anybody has any questions that they would like to pose to any of the panelists, uh, you do have a, a pane in your control panel where you can type those in and we'll be able to, to share those with our presenters. Um, so to get it started, um, I guess uh, Debbie can help me uh, with with directing these, but um, I guess first question, how will Audubon members receive news about the trips? Okay, so we have been doing a series of, of emails. I know that uh, National Audubon also has been doing some outreach as well. Maki, are you able to give us any more information about uh, the National Audubon outreach? Yeah, so in terms of, of how can, can Audubon chapters hear more about upcoming trips, we will be be sending that out through the through one of the, the chapter weekly updates, probably on a on a monthly basis. And and it'll also be stored in the works, Audubon Works. Um and um and on our uh hopefully on our website as well. Um and if anyone has any questions, then they can um, contact um, either Maki or myself, and we'll be happy to sort of direct you to additional resources. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, another question. Um, do the guides uh, internationally uh, speak English? Well, I think I've yes. heard that one, too. Oh, oh yeah. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, <laughs> <No>. so <laughs> we can... Um, we have worked, so Belize is an English speaking country, um, so that is, is really not a problem at all. Um, and then uh, Guatemala and uh, Colombia, we've been working with the participants, the guides themselves, to teach them English as part of the training that they've received from Audubon and from our, from our partners. So the, the effort has been that they, yes, they, they should be able to speak English um, at least to a level that, that would that would help you get to the right birds and enjoy yourselves. Thank you. Uh, do you have options for independent travel um, and arranged groups and how many, uh, what's the general group size? Well, I can answer that. Yes, we can do uh, individual programs uh, on, on a similar itinerary with private guide if you just want to have a small family group or a couple. And as far as uh, doing a group, that the minimum group size is eight, and I can assist you with that. Okay, thank you. Um, have you developed any bird-based tours in the U.S., um, or is there any intention to do this in the future? Well, I think that sounds like an Andrea question. I think that might be a Matt question, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> pass this one around. Um, uh, I, uh, sorry. No, I think I think um, I think it's a it's a great opportunity. Um, I'm not sure that uh, I you know for, we work specifically with the international part of Audubon and working outside the U.S. Um, but I know several of our colleagues. I have several colleagues that are looking at, 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 at similar strategies around some of the, the habitats that they work on, such as the Cutlands Warbler in Michigan. It's, it's seen as a potential um, revenue generator to support the conservation work that's so essential for that species. So there is absolutely some some effort out there. I don't think it's quite as organized as this, but, but hopefully we'll get there. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, when are the peak times to get to these destinations for the optimum diversity in coastal and interior species? Uh, I, I can answer some of that and then you can jump yep. in. No, go um, right ahead. So, <laughs> so, so uh, we, we tend to like to go through uh, the bird migration. So the birds tend to leave the United States around October time. Um, shorebirds are a little bit earlier than that, but if you're looking for shorebirds and forest birds, that's a good sort of safe bet. Um, and then um, they leave some of these sites around um, around sort of Mar uh, May, um, early May is, is sort of the, the end uh, for, for those, but, but, um, but you'll have a really good time most of the time you go. Um, certainly if you're going to Colum Columbia, the migrants won't be there, but you've still got 2,000 other species to look at. So, um, you know, for Belize, Guatemala, again, like it's, it's really great birding all year round, but the, the peak when the migrants are there are going to be um, October through May. Okay, thank you. Um, can you accommodate travelers with special needs like food allergies or other special needs? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yes, That's Debbie, right. do you want to do you want to go ahead and answer that or? Well, yes, we can, and it's you know just up to the participants to let us know about those in advance, and we can we can make sure that the uh, the restaurants and the and the hotels and lodges on the other side are notified. So yes, that is true. We can. Okay. Um, is Guyana in South America a possible area for bird ecotourism and conservation work, uh, either now or in the future? From the Audubon I'll answer for all, oh, yeah. I can answer that for Audubon. It is a country of interest for us for this project. Uh, we have, in fact, been approached by the government of Guyana um, and now it's just a case of, of we need to wrap up a couple of the projects in these countries so that we have the capacity to move on and focus on countries like Guyana. But yes, it's, it's not currently, but it is high priority for the future. Okay, thank you. Um, can you talk a little bit about how um, it's possible to keep a conservation focus for the organization um, and use the trip as a successful fundraiser and also just in general um, kind of speak about how these types of programs can benefit chapters? Would you like to yeah, so there's sort of, go ahead. I was going to say there's like three or four questions in that one, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, so, so make sure I answer them all. So, so um, how do we keep the conservation going? So, so this project has really woken up different aspects of the governments in these countries and has really given birds um, a value to, um, to import, you know, the tourism ministries who tend to be very powerful in these countries, especially as, they, you know, as tourism dollars are, are so essential to their co economies. Um, and so we, we've really given birds a, a, a sort of a value, an economic value and a voice in this process and really helped highlight some of the, both the, the, the you know, specific protected areas. Um, and again, this is, this is a bit of a pilot, so, so hopefully we can expand in all of these countries to include more protected areas. Um, but also, also we, we really highlighted the importance and the role that rural communities um, uh, take in the conservation efforts. And for example, this is you know, through uh, the increased outreach um, and these economic opportunities, this and some other livelihood opportunities we've provided around coxcomb in Belize, uh, coxcomb Basin Wildlife Sanctuary, we now have taken poaching, which was extremely high in 2011, and reduced that to almost zero today. And that, that's primarily due to projects like this. So there really is an opportunity for the conservation and the tourism and the economics really go hand in hand in, in sort of reducing the impact to these sites. So I think that was the first part of the question. The second part is, um, I think it was, um, can, can you remind me of the second part? Sure. Um, I think the person is asking um, how these types of programs can help um, fundraising, uh, help chapters fundraise and also benefit the chapters just in general. Yeah, and um, Andrea, um, maybe Debbie. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, Debbie and I can speak to that. Um, the 
program um, pricing includes a donation amount uh, both to um, National Audubon as well as the local chapter um, and includes um, free um, uh, free participation for the organizing individual um, because they obviously play an important role in making the logistics, um, you know, coordinating with Holbrook. Um, so, so this is um, something that can um, benefit in terms of, you know, real dollars and cents uh, for, for the individual Audubon chapters or, you know, any, any particular group, it doesn't have to be an Audubon chapter, um, can also uh, be a part of that as well. Yeah, and I'll just I follow up. I think, oh, 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 sorry, I just I wanted to, to follow up with the National Audubon Society donation, part of the established trips that are going on. Um, that actually comes to, to the International Alliances program here and we reinvest that back into our conservation projects internationally. So you okay, have a direct, and Debbie, a did you want to um, add yes. anything? Yes. I did. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention is by taking a group, you are building affinity for your organization. You know, anybody knows when you travel with folks, you really get to know them, and I think that even the bigger benefit, other than the monetary payoff that you get when the group travels, is that affinity factor. And people uh, really want to support your organization and they want to do more to help. So, you know, it might cultivate some donors that might not have, have thought about, you know, giving or, you know, even getting people more involved in, in local Absolutely. communities. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, great question. Thank you. Uh, do you have tours planned for a variety of budgets? Um, I can certainly answer that, um, that we do have the ability, as you, what you saw were what we consider to be, um, you know, well-designed um, core programs, but we're certainly able to um, expand on those for people who, for instance, would like a longer trip or, um, you know, correspondingly cut those down. For example, if you don't have eight days for Belize, it might be possible to do seven uh, or, um, you know, so shorter trip length and customization, as well as um, even working with different properties in an area to bring costs down. Okay, thank you. Um, we have someone who'd like to ask also, um, someone who also has an additional interest uh, in photography. They're wanting to ask uh, how they can help get involved uh, in photo philanthropy with, uh, with our organizations. Mm. Wow, that's a, I've yeah. not heard of that before. That's great. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. Well, have you want to go, Matt? Yeah, I, I just um, you know we we really struggle with really good images to promote um, the work that we do, and uh, certainly with this project, the countries that we're trying to support. Um, some countries are a little easier than others, but but we're always always interested in anyone that can help us with photographs um, to support the initiatives and as long as they're happy that we use them for, for these sorts of promotions um, and, and other means. And if there's anyone out there that's really interested in this, um, they be, you know, um, I'm happy to, to Mucky or I can talk to them about how we can, we can work out how to get you to the right places and meet the right people and, and uh, hopefully be supported by some of your work. Great, thank you. Um, I think we have time for maybe just one or two more quick questions. Um, so I'll ask, uh, we have someone who'd like to know, within the target countries for this project, are the local educational school systems on board with teaching the importance of their biodiversity uh, as well as conservation of natural resources? Hey, that sounds like a great question for Rowan. On, Absolutely. Rowan? I think, yes, probably Rowan All is there. All the way from the Paten. <laughs> oh, it's amazing technology. I'm assuming you're still on the line. Here I am. I'm still on the line. Can we please repeat the question? Sure. We had have someone who'd like to know uh, within our target countries uh, if the local educational school systems are on board with teaching the importance of their biodiversity um, and conservation of natural resources. Yeah, that is a great question, and um, the answer is definitely yes. One thing we've been working with here for years is with the Ministry of Education, 
and uh, we've had the fortune to develop a school curriculum especially tailored to some of the particular villages that we work in. It's a very select niche, uh, but working with Audubon too, we've been able to reach uh, thousands of school children here uh, in the Paten uh, because we've continued the program and there's even been interest in, in taking uh, some of the outreach and bird awareness classes to other villages outside of the Maya Biosphere Reserve. Um, so the village of Washaktun, if you're able to visit that, you'll be able to see the school, see the environmental focus that the teachers provide to the local students there. And, um, and then also in the village of Paso Caballos, there's been a lot of work, particularly uh, with the scarlet macaw that's a very endangered species, uh, of which there are only 300 that are left here in the country. So um, thank you for your question. And definitely, yes, we're working with the younger generations. Great, thank you. Um, and then I think uh, this will be our last question before we wrap up. Um, we have someone who'd like to know if there are other projects that groups can work on uh, as part of their birding trips to Central and South America, um, either uh, with local organizations or philanthropy um, with, with local organizations. You mean like, I'm assuming that means like hands-on, boots on the ground kind of Working? I, I think that's what they're asking, yes. Yeah, Debbie, we can, we can answer some of that, which is uh, here in Guatemala, we're just beginning to work now um, with the development of some MOSI stations. So if people are interested, we can work with chapters and with chapter members, um, especially if they have any sort of experience in handling birds, uh, the uh, monitoring of overwintering, overwintering survival rates is really focused on these Nearctic species that come down um, and migrate from the U.S. down and spend their winters here. Uh, so in October of this year, we are going to be starting some MOSI stations and we could use some support from volunteers with experience. Another way to support uh, projects is by participating in Christmas bird counts and actually sponsoring the participation of local uh, community members in those Christmas counts. So those are two ideas that, uh, that mm, might great be Great ideas. Thank you. Yes. Which gives us a chance to put a plug in for that. We're working on a Christmas yeah. bird count. Rowan and I are working together to come up with a, with <clears throat> a program and, and, and dates for that for this coming year. So if you're interested in that, just let me know. And yeah. I'll get you on the list for when we get that set up. Yeah, and I'll, I'll you know, in addition to what Rowan has, has uh, put forward, I think uh, for, you know, the, the similar sort of programs exist in, in um, certainly for Christmas bird count in all, all of the target countries here, um, and there's always need for participation. Um, the, uh, there's also opportunity, so we have worked with some ch Audubon chapters to Support some uh, additional trainings like eBird, uh, how to how to use eBird, um, English language training uh, for some of the communities that, that need a little bit extra help in, in sort of teaching English, um, and um, you know and, and volunteer opportunities um, in things like uh, interpretive signage and and other opportunities that we've worked on in, in Belize and Bahamas. So. Um, and certainly different survey um, windows that, that need citizen science support. Um, there, are, there are many out there. So, so there is a lot of opportunities across all the target countries to get uh, more engaged and more involved. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Uh, before we wrap, Debbie, do you have any final comments or last words? I think those were just fantastic questions. So thank you, audience, for those. That is just um, very meaningful kinds of questions, and we, we appreciate that. And I appreciate all of our panel here today, too. Thank you guys so much for participating. And um, we are here for questions. If you, if you want to call me or uh, email me, or uh, any of us for that matter, we would, um, we would really appreciate hearing from you. 
Wonderful. Well, thank you, Debbie. Um, with that, we're going to conclude our webinar today. Uh, I would like to thank our panelists for joining us and sharing their expertise, and thank you to everyone who attended. Uh, we hope you found the presentation interesting and informative, and the webinar today has been recorded. We'll be emailing everyone a replay, uh, so if you missed any part of the webinar, you'll be able to watch it back, or if you, uh, again, have any questions, please feel free to get in touch with us. Uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions that we weren't able to get to uh, during our webinar today. Uh, thank you again, and have a great rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.